Welcome to the link. Uh, it is a warm and balmy late May afternoon, and today I'm excited. I'm with Devin Nearing, uh, entrepreneur, uh, numerous brands, uh, Wake MNN. Yeah, Wake MN, River Brothers, River Brothers. and then uh, marketing agency called Rev Branding Industries. Yep. Um, so you kind of got your hand in a lot of different things as well as videography and, yeah. <laughs> and marketing too, right? Yeah. Um, kind of wanted to talk today a little bit, you know, in the state of business, uh, bring in someone who's running multiple small businesses and kind of talk about uh, what it's like here in spring, summer of 2020, and then uh, learn some things that we can do and uh, overcome some of the adaptations that we're all facing right now in today's environment. So Devin, welcome. Thanks for yeah. joining us. Um, we've known each other for what, three, four years, yeah, roughly. Been... Um, you're from St. Cloud, Central Minnesota. Yeah, I grew up in Sock right? Rapids. Did so, you go to Sock Rapids High School? Yep. So we're, we're competitors at our friends now. But um, <laughs> yeah, so I grew up in Sock Rapids, grew up here and uh, end up going down to Mankato for college. Gotcha. Um, my one one sibling. I, yeah, I got one brother. One brother, yeah. older, younger. Younger, two years. Dylan, he's single. <laughs> Just kidding. But um, yeah, so I don't. I was kind of a pain in the butt when I was growing yeah. up. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of my teachers probably thought I was a little on the annoying side, but I had fun and uh, had a great time growing up here. Yeah. What'd you like to do when you're in high school or um, pass the time? I mean, yeah, so outdoorsman. Yeah. Fishing, hunting, or? I grew up hunting, fishing. Yeah. Loving every day, and then uh, spent a lot of time on the lakes. Yeah. In the Mississippi River here in Sartell, Sock Rabbits, uh, with one of my good friends growing up, and uh, which that actually kind of inspired me to start the, my first company, which was Wake MN. And prior to even starting Wake MN, my whole, the concept of me even starting, like wanting to be an entrepreneur was inspired by another friend of mine's dad. And growing up in high school era, even before that, We'd be out on the lake and hanging out, surfing. Well, before sure. surfing was even a thing. We used sure. to do what they call wakeboarding <laughs> yep. and skiing, that yep. sort of stuff. And, but I was inspired by him just because he would be out there pulling us on a tube on um, surfing or whatever maybe doing, and he'd still be working. I mean, it'd be 2 o'clock on a Monday, and he was still able to spend time with us. And it really like opened my eyes to a different world other than sitting behind a desk 9 sure. to 5. Sure. And that like started my... My mind clicking. Um, my mom did daycare, so yep. I got a little piece of it, but that was a little different business. Yep. That, I mean, we all we love our daycare ladies. So, yep. but. so you're in high school, and you decided is that when you kind of originated Wake and Wake Men's an apparel, yeah, apparel company. Is that the I best way? I, to? Yeah, it's a apparel company. Yep, um, Minnesota Water Sports Apparel Company. I think the idea, me and my buddy Logan were sitting on a boat one day, and we're like, did we should start a company? And we First, we're just talking about doing like surf lessons. Yeah. When you start punching numbers, you don't make a whole lot of money on <laughs> surf lessons. Yeah. But so we kind of, I kind of, it got my mind rolling that I want to start a company in the water sports industry. Sure. Um, and uh, so through high school, it was kind of a thing in the back of my mind. I still went through that like stage of, oh, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a, I think I was going to be a therapist at one point, yeah. my junior year. And then I took anatomy. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't work out. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, yeah. It was just kind of part of the process. Then I did DECA with uh, Mr. John Rasmussen. Yep. And he kind of, okay, he figuratively slapped me in the face and was like, yo, Deb, you have a lot of potential, but you're going to have to work hard for it. Sure. And shape up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So. The traditional school route wasn't intriguing enough or, well, I should talk about anatomy or. Yeah. I mean, I just knew that I, I don't learn very well. I don't. I can read. I'm a great reader, but yep. I don't enjoy it. Yep. I'm like, I'll read a book and I'll get through that first paragraph and I'll start like looking outside and wondering where my friends are at. Sure. <laughs> sure. But I'm sure a lot of people go like struggle yep. with that too. But So you kind of started Wake MN in your high school. You went to Mankato State. Yeah. Kind of worked on that while you're studying. Well, so I actually didn't even start Wake MN until... Um, my sophomore year in college. Okay. When I was down in Mankato, and actually when I first got down there, I was running, so you know Bristow's in St. Cloud? Yes. So Bristow's too, I was working for Nate Bristow. And, okay. Um, I was working at St. Cloud at the mall store, and then was doing a couple events, and 
when they found out I was going to end up in Cato, we opened a kind of like a seasonal store for two years, my freshman yep. and sophomore year. Yep. And I was, I mean, I was in charge of it and I was, it was an awesome experience because yep. yeah, I got to be part of the hiring and see that whole employee side yep. um, or employer side of the business. And while I was there, I mean, you're working with clothing brands and I mean, one of the biggest brands we worked with was Fox, like yep. Fox Racing, yep. Motocross and whatnot. And I just always found myself sitting there. I was like, why do people buy this shirt? It's just a shirt. Yeah. You're like, hey, I can design a, yeah. a logo, a brand, the same yeah. sort of. And But I was more in, in influenced by the branding and like why people yeah. bought that. And yeah. uh, so I just would always find myself paying attention to the designs and just the color combinations and then like the photos and the stuff they would send us yeah. along with their products that people were always fired up to buy yeah. and get along with it or whatever it was. And so that was... After that store closed, my sophomore year um, was kind of like, I was like, I'm doing it. Let's start this yeah. brand. And I knew what I wanted to do. I had a vision. Yeah. Spent. Plus, it was around something you like doing. Yeah. Yeah. Water sports. Yeah. 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 And I went through the whole grinding process till 3 a.m. nights, mid college, trying to yeah. study. And so, what's it like? So, you're sourcing product. I mean, I have never, I don't have the slightest idea of what it's like. So, you're sourcing product. You got a, the embroidery. Is that the hats, the sweatshirts, the shirts? I mean, walk me through what's all involved with that just as far as. Yeah. It was a, a it, long, strenuous learning process. So I'm not yeah. going to give too much away because yeah. it's kind of like part of the, the industry. If you're going to get into it, you got to kind of learn right. on your own. Um, though I do help a lot of people and friends or just people that reach out that want to get into the industry. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, there's thousands and thousands of options for apparel and you can either start where you find some nice garments that you can decorate uh either yourself or all like we use other decorators yep. around minnesota try to keep them local i have one specific that i've been working with but um and then you can get into where you're making completely custom products sourcing them overseas um, i love to be making stuff here in the u.s i dug into every little dark hole i could find yeah. and it was always like just not feasible cost not quantities yeah. and costs and yeah. at my stage and our level i was like we were at just right was not plausible so yet. you figure out how to source everything and then how are you selling it all online initially or are you getting into any brick and mortar retail stores or how do you break through getting in front of the, the yeah. public well so we i know so we're, instagram kind of like blew up what was it 2010 was yeah. that kind of what the 2011, 20, 20, yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. And so I knew that like it was the easiest way to get your name out there. Sure. Just because of how fast it was blowing up. Everyone was on it. And obviously Facebook was already around, but I, I already thought Facebook was becoming like something that my mom really enjoyed to use. Yeah. So I wasn't super fired up about sure. it. But it still is adjusted as effective. Right. Um, but yeah, so we used Instagram to basically ramp up our launch of the company and People were all fired up, and I mean, it was out of Minnesota logo in it, and that was kind of like right at the peak time uh, when Soda Clothing came out. Yep. And I knew they had their own little niche, and I was kind of bummed when they first came out, because or when I first found out about, because I was like sitting here working all this that's, time. Hey, on, that hey, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Crap, but I just niched it a little bit more into the water yep. sports realm, and it yep. took off. And but we did do other events too, so we would sponsor and be at surf events. Yep. Um, other anything we really could involving the lake yeah. being outdoors and then at one point um i made the push into shields and we were in how hard was that i mean oh, what's man. it like do you just have to get in front of the right person do you have to have like a proof of concept what do they want to see to say okay we'll give you a test run of your product on our shelves yeah i mean the, the biggest thing was persistency yeah i mean i went in so many different times I would f talk to different managers, different stores. And, and then finally, yeah, it was like that one person that finally caught my drift and yep. they were like, yeah, let's do this. And it just ramped up from there. But yep. and as far as getting into these bigger retailers, especially Shields, I thank them every day for giving me the opportunity to sell there. And, and then uh, that give you a, a lot more exposure. Oh yeah. Just the, yeah, it was the presence there. I mean, some people, they buy the hat and they rip the tag off and never even looked at it. Right. They don't know, but, um, it is, I mean, they sold thousands and thousands of hats that, um, I, we, people see them all the time. And well, 
speaking of that, sidebar, how cool was it? Oh. <laughs> you know where I'm going. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting this winter watching the Super Bowl, and I'm like, holy shit, there's Devin's Wake <laughs> MN logo. Yeah. Guy's wearing a hat on the Super Bowl, and I'm assuming your phone just blew up at that point. Or, that <laughs> yeah. had to be a little <laughs> surprising, was... yet a fun feeling, right? Oh, man, I was sitting there, and I was doing my thing on my phone like I probably always am, and I hear my dad to my left just start like, <laughs> like trying to like like he's about to puke and I'm like yeah. what is going on and he's like your hat your hat and I look up and the, just a last second glimpse yep. I got to see the guy wearing my hat and um, oh my phone blew up we had everyone was messaging the yep. page and my page and calling me I, so it was yeah people pay millions yeah. of dollars for Super Bowl yeah. coverage there that's it like a, it was like a seven second yeah shot. it was a long shot so, I had enough time I grabbed my phone and just snapshot it I'm yeah. like um. But anyways, not to get sidetracked, I just thought that had to be a cool feeling, you yeah. know, to see that. Yeah, and it, I ended up actually finding out who it was. Someone of a friend of a friend of a friend saw sure. it and was like, so they, we connected us and he was an awesome guy. And he actually ended up working for Shields, so. Oh, really? Yeah, he was one of their well, guys. That's cool. So, yeah, it was awesome. Um, and so then you also decide to do an additional clothing line or attire river brothers outfitters which is more hunting outdoors yep when did you start make the transition because you're still doing wake mn yeah correct what led into that we so when i was i think it was junior or sophomore at the same time when i was i, I think it was a sophomore when i was launching wake mn as i was doing that i, I always kind of like had in the back of my mind i wanted to be in the outdoor industry because i've been hunting since i was like three again it's Back to what you were passionate about, yeah. what you like doing. Another passion-driven yep. thing I wanted to do, and um, yeah. so then I just got my wheels turning and burning, and everything going on in my mind at once was like I figured everything out, yep. and so I wrote it down on paper, and it sat there for three yep. years, four years, and then finally, um, when I got to the point where I was like, "Yeah, let's do it," we opened it back up and ran with it, and. Uh, yeah, it's just ever since then, it's been a ride and we love it. We're still kind of in a, we're like a year and a half old now. Okay. We're still in our startup stage, but we, I mean, introduced our own camouflage pattern. Um, and we're working with partnerships, collaborations, how we can get that in the still, market more. So you're going to both trade shows yep. um, and social media, I'm assuming Instagram still, yep. Shopify type, yep. Yep. back yep. phone, store. How do you how do you acquire new? Are you getting familiarity at the shows, on social media, both, or how are you acquiring customers? It's from it's all like between the social media, the website, the trade shows, the the content, our YouTube. Um, it all like is a piece of the puzzle, yep. and that's kind of how I've treated everything yep. that I've done and. And then it leads into, so like the, the marketing industry, rev branding industries, yep. which honestly like wasn't even a plan for me. It kind of like just started rolling and into... You're this, able to incorporate that into yeah, your other brands. That like, and so. I mean, like when we met, I was doing videos and I was just looking for work and money. And right. Because these other companies you start up, especially when you have inventory, you have a high overhead and there ain't a whole lot of money coming in your first two years and anything for sure and um so yeah that's when i was doing videos and that's how we got connected yep. and um it was just like little things like that people would hit me up ask me for photos because they'd see the stuff i was doing for wake him in and they, oh can you help me do a logo i saw what you do there and it just introduced this whole new world to that yeah i never saw coming Thankfully, it did, and it yep. has been one of my most successful ones so far. Yep. One that I didn't even plan for. <laughs> cool. Um, what has been, or what's, you know, when the spring came, what's, obviously, it's affected all of us in different ways. What's the biggest impact to your business? Obviously, you know, the trade shows and all that goes by the wayside, but yeah. walk me through what your challenges are now. Um, you know, you're still built for the internet or, you know, you can, yeah. social media, but what challenges are you experiencing and how are you adapting to get through these times? Yeah, I mean, the biggest, our biggest hit 
especially with River Brothers, we were dead center of our trade show season. Yeah. And um, we actually packed up, drove all the way down to the city. And it takes like seven hours, including drive time, of getting ready for a trade show. Yeah. And I mean, it's me like just sweating, stressing out, making sure I don't forget anything. And then um, got down there, set up, and <laughs> next day we're like halfway through the day. Um, we get the call, yeah, that everything shut down. I was like, oh, dude. Yeah. Like, Were you in Nebraska? Was that the time you were in Nebraska? No, oh, thank God, no. But uh, yeah, we were in Nebraska. Um, that was earlier, I think in January. Okay. But the one that we were just down in Shakopee, so. Oh, okay. But, so not too far. No. Home. But yeah, so I mean, our biggest obstacle though has been the trade shows because that brings in a lot of um, A, like, actually meeting consumers and building relationships in person and when these people are at these trade shows and when i can say yeah this is like me and my partner jorgen Dahl started this we're right here yep and he, they're like no way like they just they can't believe it and then yeah. they obviously want to support us and we thank everyone that does and it's just yeah. huge because yeah but so the trade show goes that's yeah. stop cold turkey so then what how do you adapt or what comes next yeah i mean the second that happened was i mean we got hit by a train just like every other business yeah. in the world well, the u.s for sure did yeah and i mean it literally came down to focusing on trade show season yep from from that straight to all online so we ramped up content we started doing more videos we started doing ads and you i mean marketing schedule you got to plan out your sales your promotions and everything you're doing right especially for when you're selling products right um, cuz you constantly want something going on some for your fans and customers to see or watch or view or yep cuz it's again what you're putting out there is why they support you yep and so we just ramped that up and granted, I mean it's still it's not been I'm not going to say it's been good right I mean, we're in that part of the season now where everyone's transitioning to fishing which we do have some new fishing products coming out soon but um yeah, it, I mean, it's been a struggle, but the biggest thing is just we shifted our focus to the content. And you and have social. an online store, yep. all that yep. set up. and yeah. Um, yeah, we already had that prior. So. Yeah, which a lot of people didn't and were scrambling to no. get in place. So, um, yeah, so we're River Brothers. What's, what's the next year, two years down the road, or what's up well, and coming? Well... <laughs> We had a really nice plan until COVID hit, so yeah. uh, we're still kind of working on that, um, on what our next moves are um, as far as new products and whatnot. Yeah. Obviously, new products, new gear, new innovations are top of our list to do. Um, yeah. It's just, it's tough when you're, I mean, people- You don't know. No one knows what's going on right now, right. so we're just kind of, along with everyone else, we're chilling here, doing what we know best, connecting with our fans and customers. Yeah. and. I mean, people are still ordering and we thank them. I make sure I write my personal thank you every time I can. Yep. And um, yep. it's just huge. So, yep. but it also leads back to that brand, yep. building the brand. And I know you talked before on a couple episodes and uh, it's literally comes down to that connection you've made with your consumers, your customers. And I mean, I'm not a huge word of the word fans, but your fans. And if you haven't done that prior to this, you're sitting there. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I, I And you've heard me talk about it. The restaurant industry now is the perfect example. You see the ones that have the loyal following and the ones mm -hmm. that don't. Um, not that any restaurant is thriving right now by any means, but the ones that are surviving have that loyal yeah. customer base. And I think that's true of any industry is um, mapping your actions, not necessarily sales are important, right? Mm -hmm. But mapping your actions to creating that loyal customer yeah. base is the long-term solution yeah and it's and i get like i get asked a lot like how much is it going to cost to like build my brand yeah. and i'm like i normally when i get asked i sit there i'm like honestly i it's gonna be way more than what you want to hear <laughs> like i i put years into what i have and it's still like it's a non-stopping thing you don't people you don't want to get overwhelmed with oh it's going to cost more because ultimately your brand is just your personal reputation yep. and so as long as you um 
live live what you're talking about and do what you say. You're mm-hmm. branding every time you're yeah. out with people too. So it's not just um, the old school marketing logo. Yeah. I mean, that's part of it, but it's when you're how you treat people when you're out with people. Mm-hmm. That's building brand. Um, oh, yeah. And so I think you know you people can get overwhelmed with I got to invest tens of thousands of dollars, which you can spend unlimited, but. Mm-hmm. To say, okay, we're going to create a logo and that's your brand. I mean, yes and no. Your yeah. logo is part of your brand, but it's really what that logo means mm-hmm. and how you interact with people that at the end of the day is your brand. What people think about when they see your logo is your brand. Yeah. Right? Oh, I mean, it's priceless. Like You yep. cannot put a value on it. And that's what one of the things that I think makes it so hard. And like you were saying, everything you do is, is part of it and it leads to like the fact that it, everything you do is just another piece of the puzzle. Yep. And every, whether it's your own time, you're investing into it, but the only way to start is like really write down that brand on your, like visualize it and try to write it down. And like you know, when you're building a team, getting everyone to understand that same brand and kind of stick yep. with it and live by it is- It's important. Yeah, it's huge. It's important. So. Um, so, I'm just curious. Did you ever River Brothers in Shields or not? No, we. Not, so it's been a conversation we've been having, and yeah. uh, we're gonna hold off until we kind of can get a little further into more established, more experience on what we're doing, whether it's just the products and whatnot. Yeah. Um, just because once you get into these bigger retailers, there are. They, I mean, they have demands that For sure. you need to meet and not saying they're mean, like they're great people, yeah. <laughs> but it's, you just, you got, they want to make sure you're established and you have it. And I don't want to, the second you put yourself into that criteria, you have to meet it. And that's one. For sure. Because they're supply, I mean, they're stocking brands like yeah. Under Armour or Nike. I mean, yeah. there's going to be a level of expectation in delivering oh, yeah. that, and that comes along with that for sure. Yeah. I mean, what we've been doing is focusing on is, um, it's kind of a, I guess this secret trait of mine, but like collaboration and yeah. growing together is one thing that we've been focusing on for River Brothers. So we got various organizations, companies that we've been working with. Um, we either, I mean, whatever it is, it's a, a video, um, we're trying to do some hunts, uh, whatever it is. And I mean, w- most recent one, we did a cool little giveaway with Reed's Sporting Goods up in uh, okay. Walker and I think Onamia. Okay. So we did a cool old turkey. It was a no. What was it? We, oh, we did a no calls needed turkey competition, which turkey calling competition. Which you had to like make a turkey call with your mouth without <laughs> people got a kick out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. then with Reeds, we did a basically like a turkey season giveaway, and that was fun. So sure, yeah, sure. And then in addition, you mentioned uh, Rev branding. That's kind of your marketing, where you're creating, you're actually creating content, videography. Mm-hmm. Um, social media, you have a number of clients, you know, in central yeah. Minnesota that you're doing brand, well, not just central Minnesota, yeah. right? But talk a little bit about how you find time to fit that in and what specifically are you advising clients to do and how are you fit in to add value or bring them value? Yeah. So, I mean, with Rev, it like obviously start with the videos, the photography, yeah. um, it's constantly like been evolving and I've had a bit like a vision where I want it to go. Um, and it, I'm starting to see it form into that vision, which is like one of the coolest feelings in the world. But, um, so basically we're at, where we're at right now. I mean, we have clients that we just do video for photo shoots, um, whatever it may be. But m- some of our favorite ones were, they basically take us in as their like, marketing team. Yep. So we'll take over their website, social media. Um, are these a lot of times startups or established or what kind of it, all over? It's, yeah. All it's kind of been varying. Yeah, startups are great for us because we can kind of like be there from the beginning yep. and we can feel everything out and help them as well. Whether it's not just social media, the website, just um, for banners and stuff at their trade shows. Sure. I mean, it, it, there's, like you said, it's endless, but yep. so I've, I mean, we've had, been having a ton of fun with the startups. So if you do have a cool idea, hit us up. But um, yeah, I mean... As far as social media and this time, it's just keep making content. And I mean, a lot of my, our clients, they get emails from me saying, when can we get more content? We need to get yeah. some shoot, photo shoots in and everyone's, I mean, they're got their own worries, but yeah. So I just, we keep pushing to do what 
we know what we got to do. And yeah. So. Well, what else? Is there anything else you want to mention? River Brothers, Wake MN, or kind of what is? No, we're going to got some new plans for Wake MN. Um, can't disclose those yet. <laughs> um, we're kind of I'm kind of hitting a busy season, so I'm not sure when they're going to be ready. But um, as far as River Brothers, like yeah, we got some new products gear coming out. Uh, you can check out River Brothers at www.riverbrothers.com, wakemn.com. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're just kind of just riding the train of life right now and seeing where it cool. goes. Well, um, I appreciate you coming in, taking the time to, it's kind of fun to sit down, you and I, and talk yeah. and chat rather than I'm, the other. I'm normally sitting right over yeah. there. <laughs> He's normally behind the camera, yeah. but um, reach out to Devoneering, uh, riverbrothers.com, yep. um, Wake MN, and on Instagram is where I see a lot of your stuff, yeah. but um, full digital marketing, um, and then he utilizes those services for his yep. own brand. So, um, and I'm sure you're, I can't imagine that you won't be evolving into something else, another brand at some time branching yeah. off. I'm, but, I mean, my long-term goal I've decided is I want to open a tiki bar. <laughs> so if I can do that by Admit 30, a up? we're going to, secret, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. We're, maybe in Mexico. We'll see where yeah. I end up. Yeah. But, <laughs> Florida Keys that's where I would recommend oh they got hurricanes there yeah that's true that's true might be Minnesota <laughs> well cool well thanks Devin for coming in um, and we will chat next time thanks everyone for listening bye bye awesome. thanks guys <laughs>